Hey happy bees, welcome back to the channel. A bit of a different video for you this week. I am hosting my first ever cake decorating class tomorrow. Oh, I'm so excited. I've wanted to do hands-on classes for such a long time and I can't believe it's finally here. So with that being said, I had to order lots of bits and pieces in for the class. And when I was ordering them, it occurred to me that these are all bits and pieces that you need when you're starting out making fondant figures and doing sugar modeling. Cake decorating supplies are so expensive. So if you're starting out and you want to know what to get and you want to get a few basic things, I'll walk you through what you need to get. What should you open first? I think I'm gonna open the big, the big, the big one first. So this is from the cake decorating company. And I love it whenever you get all this packaging because I can reuse it. Okay, so these are lots of cake dummies in different sizes. You would really only need one of these, but these are great for practicing on. What I should say is if you're wanting to grab some of these tools, I'll put links in the description below for everything that I'm covering in this haul. Next is a craft knife. This is great for if you're having to, well, it's <laughs> pretty self-explanatory. But why you would use this rather than an ordinary knife is thin is so great. The thin is so blade. <laughs> the blade is so thin, so it's a lot better for sugar work. Edible paint. So if I'm starting out, I would advise you to get some edible paint in white, black, or brown because mainly you're using edible paint for character features such as eyelashes and eyebrows. So I've ordered an edible paint in white, and there should be a black one in here somewhere. Yep, the black one. Okay, so next is a flower modeling tool. This is so handy for if you're making eyes or smiles and stuff. I'll tell you a secret, I'm not really into making flowers. I don't think I've really ever made, I've made a few flowers, but it doesn't really float my boat. I love making the little characters. So even though this is called a flower modeling tool, I use it for facial features. Okay, so this is a bulbous cone. <laughs> this is really good if you're making things like um, skirts and stuff for characters. So you would use this end here to frill out the bottom of the skirt. And also I find I use the other side of this tool as well for to create eyes and different things. So I would get this. Okay, so this one is a Dresden painting tool. Again, it's for flowers, <laughs> but I would be lost without this tool. I use it every single time I'm modeling. It's just really handy for picking bits and pieces up or smoothing out the skin on a face. It's just, yeah, these are just so handy. have some non-stick rolling pins. These wee small ones are really handy for, again, making clothes for your cake toppers um, yeah okay so this is a non-stick mat this is a must because i'm sure if you work with fondant or modeling paste you're probably well aware of how sticky it is so you really do need a non-stick mat you can get flexible silicone mats i prefer these ones here because they're really hard and if you need to roll something out really thin I would recommend one of these. These are quite expensive I think this was maybe 10 or 15 pounds but if you are just starting out what you could do is get a square of cardboard quite thick cardboard if you can and you can put grease proof paper over the cardboard and sellotape it on the other side so that's like a homemade <laughs> non-stick mat. I have so many tips and things of using fondant and homemade cake decorating tools. If you want to see a video on that, let me know in the comments below. But yes, this is a non-stick mat. This side here is for, again, if you're using flowers, but I want to use the more flat side of it. It also comes with this non-stick material that you put under your mat and it means it's not going to slide all around your work surface. So next in the box we have a foam pad. So this is really good for if you're drying out your fondant figures and stuff. Um, it helps the air circulate around the figure. Whereas if you just set your figure onto the mat, the bottom part of it won't dry properly. This lets the air circulate all around your figure and that way it ends up perfectly dry. You probably see in the background of my videos all the time my figures sitting out dry. 
and either they're on a cake dummy because these are quite good to dry your fingers on too or they're on a foam pad and again this is a proper cake decorating pad you can just if you're starting out just get a sponge you know like a big sponge that you would wash the car with that'll do the job as well okay so gel color pastes if you're getting some fondant or modeling paste i would recommend you get some in white black and red. The reason being that you can buy the red food colouring but it'll just turn your fondant pink and it's the same with the black. You need to use a lot of colour to get try and get it into a black colour. So I would buy your modelling paste or your fondant in white, red and black and then you can use these to colour. I use the gel colours rather than the food colours because these don't really muck about with the consistency of your fondant. And if I was starting out again, I would get these in, so this is the skin tone colour. I would also get a blue one of these, royal blue. Again, I'll link it down below. Green, really your primary colours because once you have a set of primary colours, you can make really any colour you like. Okay. Wire cutters. So the reason why I would get these is that most of your fondant figures are going to need a cocktail stick or a skewer to support and this is these are really good for trimming the top of your skewer. Okay, so fine paint brushes, these are perfect for fine details, eyelashes, eyebrows, things like that. You could also do with a bigger brush. I would just use eyeshadow brushes, uh, brand new ones, not ones that you've already used um, for the blusher on your fingers as well. Uh, but yeah, if you can get yourself a wee set of fine, really, really fine paint brushes for doing your fine details. So circle cutters. These are a must for the like of eyes, buttons, details like that, even for creating a smile, sometimes you can just push the bottom part of the circle cutter into your figure to create a smile. So if you were starting out, get a set of maybe five of these circle cutters. Okay, and these, if you're going to start getting into cake decorating, just be prepared for your house to be taken over <laughs> with tools and products. It can be a bit overwhelming, the amount of stuff that you can accumulate. Before I had my wee studio in the other room, I just had a whole cupboard in the kitchen dedicated to all my cake decorating stuff. So storage is really a must. These I'm very excited about. I got these in Home Bargains, but you can also get them online. I've seen these on Amazon, you can link them below. So the reason why I'm so excited about this is these gel pastes can get very messy when you're storing them. I will insert a picture of how I currently store my colour pastes. See how messy it can get and this is why I'm so excited. I was at Home Bargains last week and seen this. All these color pastes individually it's just so exciting to me please tell me am I the only person that gets excited about storage cake storage so I'm gonna to have to clean out all my other pastes wash them all off dry them and put them in here that is perfect So smaller versions of these for your dusts you know the way your dusts would come in a little pot so you can get them where the squares are smaller and you can pop all your wee pots it's actually Agnes from Crumb Avenue that I seen she put a post on Instagram and she had all her pots in a little thing like this where they were all stored perfectly so I have to give her credit for this idea there are a couple of other things I want to show you that I didn't specifically go out and buy but I always use and I always have them. One of them being skewers. So you'll need skewers for your figures 
and cocktail sticks as well. So corn flour or cornstarch, I think you might call it in the States, is another must. It's really good for sprinkling on your surface. I don't really use this for figures as such, but for cakes, I definitely do use corn flour. So I just thought I would include this. So a lot of you have noticed in the videos or have commented that sometimes my hands can look greasy or that the sugar paste can look really shiny. And the reason for that being is that I'm sure you know that modeling paste and fondant is really, really sticky. So what I would do before I start using my sugar paste is I have a little pot with some of this. Now this is just vegetable shortening. I think it's called Trex in the US, but it's, it, it is just vegetable shortening. I have some of this in a pot with a, a lid. And before I start modeling with my fondant or my sugar paste, I'll just take a wee part of it out and rub it through my hands and it just stops everything sticking and the beauty of it is it's edible as well. This is nothing really to do with cake decorating but it's more to do with this channel and what I'm videoing on right now. I, oh, hello. <laughs> so the links in the description of all my videos are affiliate links. So I got this from my Amazon affiliate money. Thank you because that's down to you guys using my links when you're shopping on Amazon. I'm sure if you've watched my business type videos, if you haven't seen any of those, I'll link those or I'll put the card up here. So I'm sure if you've watched those videos, you will see how busy I am. So to do a proper sit down video, you need proper lighting and proper camera, tripod, and I just don't have the time to set all that up just to sit down and film a 10 or 15 minute video. So, thanks to you guys, I um, invested in this webcam, which is just amazing. I just clip it onto my laptop, hit record, and I'm good to go. So I don't know if you're interested, it is a, it's a Logitech C930. If you've seen my first couple of videos, I had a really cheap, tiny little webcam it wasn't very good I looked very orange and my hair looked very red it still does look a bit red but it just it, the quality wasn't good so this seems to be really good quality I'm not even using an ex external microphone either it all just runs through this so if you're looking for a good web camera I will link this in the description below for you. So that was really fun to open up all those bits and pieces with you. I'm getting such good feedback on these types of videos. So thank you for leaving me a comment and let me know that you find these types of videos helpful. It's always really good to know if this is the type of thing that you want to see. And if there's anything in particular that you want me to cover or film, don't be afraid to let me know. You can leave me a comment below or you can send me a wee message on Instagram. So all it's really left for me to do is to clean up all this mess and get my studio ready for my first class. I'll let you know how it goes. Thank you so much as always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when there's a new video. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye!